Tonight, the Melrose Red Raiders serve up some six-pack spiking, attack-blocking, forearm-bumping, floater-hitting, centerline jousting, side-out stuffing, weak-side wiping, girls high school volleyball action. Take it to the net, baby. Welcome to the Melrose Veterans Memorial Middle School Gym. I'm Ron Sen here with Dick Collis on statistics, Jeff Maté on camera and production. As Melrose faces its arch competitor, the Reading Rockets. Reading always seems to play the Apollo Creed to Melrose's Rocky Balboa, and Reading always brings size, talent, toughness, and outstanding coaching. However, Melrose is favored today. Melrose opened the season Wednesday with a convincing three-set victory over Bedford. Opening on the floor tonight, Brooke Bell at setter. Sarah McGowan in the middle, Jen Kane outside, Kayla Weiland at opposite, Sydney Doherty outside, Jill McGinnis at libero, and Rachel Johnson in the middle. Melrose has a very experienced team, seven seniors. They look to return to the state championship finals again this season. Coming off a 23 and two season in 2011. Melrose has been to the Division II North Finals the last nine years. Coached by Scott Chelly and Steve Wall, the Lady Raiders are one of the top teams in the North and have con shown consistent excellence over the past decade. Reading is no slouch, however. They don't look to have quite as much size as they've had in the past. Their star middle, Melissa Del Pozo, graduated as an All-Scholastic and All-State player last year. And Olivia Healy had a Division I basketball scholarship and is not playing volleyball this season. McGinnis serves, puts it in. Redding sets the middle. Rachel Johnson got a, no, Sydney got a piece of that. Excuse me. Sarah McGowan got a piece of that and must have been called in the net. I didn't see it from here, but. Some days it's like that, you gotta watch out. Rockets to serve. Played up by Sydney to Brooke. Outside McGowan tips it and gets the point dangerously close to the net again. McGowan was recorded for 15 kills in the first game of the season. She had 307 in uh, 2011. For newcomers, we, we play in a Nine by 18 meter court, seven foot four inch net for women. Allie Nolan, back row, and that one goes into the net. Obviously you can't tell the environmental conditions at home, but I assure you it is a steamy hot 95 degree plus day in the middle school gym. Nolan, ace. Nolan's one of two sophomores on the team along with Stephanie Provo. Melrose has five left-handers on the team this year, which I do not know what that means, but it's remarkable. Deep ball. Back row attack. Goes out. That's Morgan O'Brien. O'Brien has a basketball scholarship somewhere, and I can't remember where. I, I want to say uh, Assumption. That may or may not be right. High into the, off the backboard. Free ball over Nolan to Bell. Bell, McGowan, bang. <laughs> Melrose off to a quick 5-1 lead. Lady Raiders, you could tell in warm-ups they were really up for the contest and they like to do nothing more than put a hurt on Redding. And I think they'll call a rotation error on Redding. I, I never have been able to figure out how the officials can keep track of that. You know as a coach that's the thing kind of thing that's got to make you crazy though. Or it may be a positioning error. Players have to be standing in certain places. Oh. 
Coach Michelle Hopkinson nods in agreement. Nolan just wide. Melrose six, Reading two. Melrose and Stoneham probably are the most formidable Middlesex League opposition. Nolan Bell and first pass was a little bit off there. First pass is so important. We've talked about platform skills before, serve, receive, passing, and digging. Kane, Nolan, free ball over, Melrose hits it over. Redding sets the outside. Short ball, overpass, played up, Melrose keeps it alive. Bell, McGowan's in the net. No. They call Redding in the net. Well, I think both of them were in the net. <laughs> but M Melrose is going to get the point. Amanda Camito checks in into the back row. Another one of the southpaws on Melrose's squad. After the official whistles the ball into play, the server has eight seconds to serve. Amanda gets it in deep down the sideline. It's going to be a free ball again. Played over. McGinnis, perfect pass to Bell. Bell sets the outside. Kane. Blocked far out. Point for Melrose. Kane's a dynamic player. Has huge ups for a girl who's probably at best 5'7". And definitely a potential all-scholastic candidate this season. Nolan. McGowan, I don't know what happened there. I think the timing was just a little bit off. Melrose leads 8-4 early. So far we haven't seen big offense from Redding. Good read by Kane. Kane, like many of these players, is an all-season player and uh, the more volleyball you play, the more instinctive plays you see. And those are the kind of instinctive plays that are essential for success. McGowan with a jump serve. Good wood on that. And timing was off for Redding. Morgan O'Brien sailed up looking to tip the ball over and she was already on the way down when the ball arrived. McGowan to the jump serve. Gets it in. Redding. Back set. Outside attack. Blocked by Kane. That was, a, that was a double hit right there. Not called. Outside to Kane. Kane. Oh, another ferocious cross-court short attack. Those are not defensible. Kane is, you know, early candidate for most improved. And she had an outstanding season last season. McGowan, Melrose leads 11-4. Gets it over. Middle attack. Oh, close, close. I'm not sure how Scott feels about the bench making calls on, on that kind of play. It looked like it was going to go out, but it would have been close. 11-5. Commit out of Bell, nice pass. Outside Kane, and that one just goes long. Kane has a pretty classic two-step run-up, powerful attack for, for a girl who's kind of on the compact car size. Commit out, nice pass, a little bit long to Bell. Outside attack, pancake, pancake dig by, uh, McGinnis, nice play there. Redding a little confused. That was awesome. That was kind of classic pancake dig. She got her hands underneath the ball and put it up. That, that's the kind of play that wins you championships because you keep points alive. McGinnis, second year player, sophomore, uh, junior. 
Bell serves outside attack, O'Brien. Kane to Bell, Bell outside. Back to Kane. Redding keeps it alive. Weil into Bell, Bell, middle, Rachel Johnson. Oh, Rachel with a fine attack down the line. Used the geometry of the court to her advantage, took advantage of the libero. Melrose leads 13-6, dominating early in set one. Bell. Oh, wow. Kayla kept that one alive off the net. Over by Kane. And, you know, Redding looks pretty much befuddled early by the Melrose attack. Also, the Lady Raiders have been outstanding on defense so far, and that's gonna be the calling card of this team first. Outstanding defense. Bell floats it over. Overpass, and Rachel couldn't quite get up to it. Just over, you gotta attack it right as it gets over the net. And Rachel, I'm sure, is disappointed. I'm sure she had that one marked down in her mental scorebook. Rachel's one of the you know, best, what I'd call natural timing blockers. She's, n she's not a girl who's six foot two or three using height. She's using timing. Middle to Bell, back set, and that was close to the net. Not much room for her. operations. Melrose leads 14-8. Redding still in hailing distance. Again, it's to Bell. Bell outside, Wyland. Point for Redding. Melrose still trying to get their back row act together. Commito to Bell, nice pass there. Johnson. Back row attack coming, it goes long. The back row attack can be very effective if you have enough top spin on it. They're exceptionally hard to block. Sydney Doherty checks in outside. I believe the new rules are 15 substitutions per set. Kane serves, outside attack, blocked. Kayla and Rachel. Brooke. Kayla, nice cross court set to Sydney. That was tipped on the defense. Kane, nice pass to Bell. In the middle of Rachel, winds up. Good defense by Redding, keeping that alive. Kane, you just notice the great passing there. Oh, Sydney. Good job by Melrose. You know, a timeout Redding. Kane to serve, Melrose leads 16-9. Powerful serve there, middle attack. And glanced off Rachel's block. Good job using the tool for uh, Redding. So Redding trails 16-10, just, just past the halfway mark of the first set. McGinnis. To Bell. Outside to Sydney. Sydney down the line. That's what you like to see. You know, there are six major skills in volleyball. The offensive skills are serving, attacking. We'll get back to that. McGinnis to serves. Overpass. And oh, they got lucky on that one. And it was a carry on Redding. So it was, it was, I don't know if it was a carry, it was an ugly hit. <laughs> Melrose leads 18-10. Again, it's very deep. That was close to the, the line. Outside attack, blocked by Kayla and Sarah. They put the wall up there, 19-10. Melrose dominating. I don't think you're going to see a lot of substitutions from Coach Shelley today. I think he's going to try to make a statement in this match. I'm not a McGinnis. 
Oh, that was close to a carry there. Outside to Sydney. Sydney got on top of that one pretty well. Free ball over McGowan. Brooke back to Sarah. And point to McGowan. So McGowan's racking up the kills. Melrose doubles up Redding. Redding could take a timeout here, but I'm not sure what, what it would really accomplish. J Mack to serve. Outside attack. Nicely read. Twenty one ten. J Mack. Another long ball. For, oh, that was a good play by Kayla. Brooke goes deep. Middle attack. Got around uh, Sarah's block. Redding moves up to 11. 21 11. Melrose with a comfortable 10 point lead, first set. And that might be our first uh, second service error for Redding. Allie Nolan, sophomore in. Let's see, Melrose is lefties. Nolan, Camito, Kayla, Sydney, Bell. Middle attack, played by Sarah. Outside Sydney, and Sydney gets it through. It's good to see Sydney, you know, on the attack. I thought that was Melrose's point. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was blocked. Okay. Thought it got over the net. Didn't. But 22 12. Pretty good sized crowd here at the middle school gym today. Nice pass by Nolan. McGowan on the slide attack. Came around behind. Back set. Dig set spike. 23 12. Redding did not know what hit them there. And since we've gone to the large and small division, there won't be any second chance for Reading this season. McGowan. Hannah Brickley asking, it's 24-12. Not enough dinitrogen tetroxide in Redding's fuel tanks this match. Camito wanted to finish in style with an ace close. Over Kane to Bell. Over to Kane. Back outside attack. Kane. Good job by Redding to keep that one alive. That one, that one had a lot of mustard on it. And, and Melrose closes out set one 25-12. Redding, always a formidable opponent, but this year, absent some of their stars from last year, they look perhaps not as formidable as they've been in the past. See a lot of younger Lady Raider fans in the, in the stands today, and that, that's always a good thing because it gets the, the younger players, middle school and elementary girls, interested in volleyball and wanting to be part of a successful program. So it's, it's a good thing to see Nice crowd on hand. And there will be some very attractive matches this year. Brockton is a powerhouse. Newton North as well. Rival Bishop Fenwick's won a couple of games early in the Catholic Central League. Redding. Again, the fastball. Uh, and eight, and uh, Dick reminds me that Arlington Catholic's off to a quick start in the... Uh, Catholic Central League as well. Joe McGinnis to serve. J Mac, integral part of last year's state final team. And that was the big windup and sometimes the most successful hits are the ones that are whiffs because the other team's prepared for something hard and a floater drifts in. Redding's trying to make a substitution here.
One apiece. Reading to serve. Played up by J. Mac to Bell. Bell outside. And McGowan. McGowan's like an MX missile. She appears from different places anywhere on the side of the court to wreak devastation. Allie Nolan, another left-hander. Outside attack coming. And McGinnis did her Keanu Reeves imitation in the Matrix, shifting her body out of the way cleverly from that bullet. Nolan gets it over. Middle attack and they get the tool on that one. 3-2, Melrose lead, set two, up a set. Reading to serve, jump serve, and that one's not even in the same time zone. Reading with a substitution. Melrose leads 4-2. Amanda Camito checking in to serve. There's something that's advantageous about being left-handed. Melrose has a lot of left-handed servers. Right. Reading sets the outs, no, the middle, and good attack there. They called Melrose in the net anyway. McGowan's got called in the net several times. I don't know. She's kind of looking around like, you know, who, me? I wasn't, didn't think I was in the net. So. And Redding trails 4-3 with the serve. Overpass played up by Sarah to Brooke outside Kane. Kane uses the tool. Point for Melrose. Kane has really come along. She is a phenomenal outside hitter at this point. Which is all the more remarkable considering her relative lack of size. Rachel Johnson checks into the front row. McGowan, jump serve, clears the net. Outside attack, double block. And Melrose called in the net again. I, I, I'm not seeing it. The officials are going to confer. I'm just, I'm just not seeing Melrose in the net the way they're getting called in the net. Reminds me of Jesse Owens at the 1936 Olympics when he kept get call, call, called for going over the line. So he drew a line a foot behind the uh, takeoff site in the long jump, and they used that as the line so that uh, they couldn't try to disqualify him. Oh. Melros has a little different defensive setup this year. Camito to Bell. Johnson, and yeah, that's a kill for Rachel. Melrose has its top three hitters back from last season. McGowan had uh, 307 kills. Rachel had, uh, I think, 145, something like that. And uh, Jen Kane was also around that, you know, 148, 147 level. Bell to serve. Redding hanging around. Commito, good pass to Bell. Outside, Kane down the alley. You know, Kane is my early pick as another all-state player. And Melrose has a lot of talented players on the floor. You know, there is every, every single player here could be a Middlesex League all-star. Free ball. That, that's, that's just candy for Melrose. Mag no, Rachel. And I think Redding's called in the net this time. I, I just, I'm not seeing it. You know, the... The fans around me aren't seeing the net action either, but uh, you know, we have to make it like fencing so that you have electrified uniforms. And ace for uh, Brooke Bell. 
Melrose tries to put a little separation between them and Redding. And Redding starting to make substitutions. Redding's a proud program. They will not go away easily, but they'll go away. Healy, I mean, uh, O'Brien, back row attack. Brooke pushes it over. Nice defense there by the back row. Oh, and Rachel with a block kill. That's where she excels. Just outstanding timing. You know, she's probably 5'10", but, you know, there are, there are girls you're going to see 6'1", 6'2", who don't block nearly as well. And Brooke with one of her few service errors. She's, I think she had something like four last year, and she had two the year before, so, you know. Ten five, Melrose leads. And the, the officials are not happy about the late substitution. I'm not sure if they allowed it in or not. A yellow card. Delay a game. I didn't see it, but uh, Jeff Eagle Eye Mate calls a yellow card on the play. Played up by Kane. Kane to Bell. Bell outside. Kayla was a little far away from the net to hit. Slide attack played up by Brooke. Kayla outside Kane. Kane didn't have the angle to hit the ball. It wasn't really nice. And. More, another phantom net call. Melrose leads 11-5. Kane to serve. Fans will notice that uh, the Lady Raiders have new uniforms this season. Reading middle attack. And one of the rare balls that has uh, hit the floor today and it wasn't from lack of effort. 11-6. Kane plays it live. Kayla. Just out. You know, what, what you'll notice, Melrose has always had a lot of good athletes playing volleyball, but now you really see the kind of range that some of these girls have. Kane, Sydney Doherty in the back. They can really run balls down. Sydney to Bell. Outside, Kayla. Kayla with that long swing. Kane with an overpass. Melrose gave up on that a little quick there, you know. They really read it correctly, but Melrose takes the lead 12-7 here. Rachel checks out, and I guess McGowan must be back in the lineup. J-Mac to serve. Redding plays it over. McGowan to Bell. Bell sets McGowan. Tool. Point for Melrose. McGinnis, one of my favorite players to watch. She has what uh, George Frazier of the Boston Globe used to write as duende. That certain savoir faire to make things happen. Bell, nice play. Kayla. Almost ended up trying to make a dinosaur dig out of that one. Players have to be soaked in perspiration right now in here. It's, it is hot. They need, they need warm weather gear today. McGinnis. Right. Sydney floats it over. Redding, middle attack. McGinnis to Bell. Bell, back set. Weiland 
Thought she was going cross court. And Redding hits it into the net. 14-8. Allie Nolan checks in. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a team, I have never seen a team with as many left-handed servers as this at any level. Nolan tickles the tape. And Redding's timing was disturbed. Ball falls in. Melrose leads 15-8. And a service error for Melrose. 15-9. Redding on the service line. Ball's whistled into play. Hard serve. Nolan to Bell. Doherty floats it over. Here we go. McGowan. D Doug. Kept it alive, nice pancake. Bell alive, McGowan, yeah. and take that. McGowan with a sideways swat. McGowan, one of the big hitters in Melrose history. You all know who they are, so I'm not gonna re recap them for you. Amanda Camito, one of the tri-captains this season, along with Brooke Bell and Sarah McGowan. Outside attack, O'Brien, played by Camito. Nice pass to Bell. Outside, Kane. I thought that was tipped, but that was wishful thinking on my part. Sixteen ten, Melrose leads. Looks like Olivia Healy's in the crowd. McGowan. <laughs> Boom! Jen Gentilly joins us in the booth. The new mom. Local scribe and, volley and uh, softball star. Redding keeps it alive, cleverly done. Bell sets Johnson. Trouble, good joust by Brooke. Brooke's called over the net, what? No, I think they're, I don't know what, no, they're calling a, they're calling a do over. Basically saying I made a bad call. Melrose leads 17-10. McGowan with a jump serve. Good effort by Amanda, couldn't quite get there. Point for Redding, 17-11. Redding serving, Melrose looking to go up two sets to nil. Good volleyball here today. And 17 12, ball just goes wide. Redding serves into the net. There is nothing that hurts you more than service errors. You know, it, Every team can remember service errors at critical junctures. You know, and it's one thing if you're, you know, going for aces, but that's just a routine serve. Bell to serve. Good attack there by uh, Morgan O'Brien. 18-13. Brutally hot inside the gym today, so I'm sure Melrose doesn't want to play extra games. Tomato, Bell. 
outside Wyland. Johnson, Kane, back to Rachel. Outside attack, double block. And Melrose, Melrose in the net again. They call Kayla in the net that time. We're seeing an awful lot of calls in the net now. It, it could be happening. Commit out of Bell. Back set, Kane. Outside attack, McGinnis to Bell. Outside Kane. Kane got a lot of wood on that, was partially blocked. And Redding closes to within 1815. One more point, I would think a timeout is likely to ensue. Very important point for Melrose here. O'Brien to serve. They've got her in the back row. She's their best hitter. Kane Bell. Johnson. They, they keep it alive. Oh, and a misplay there. That's costly for Redding. If they had any hope to get back into it, they had to at that point. That, of course, is a gross exaggeration. Jen Kane to serve. Kane, one of three players, along with Bell and McGowan, who participated in the North Region for the Bay State Games recently, earning a silver medal. Kane. That's wide. Reading players okay, as is the scorer's table. Seven, Melrose leads 2015. They haven't put the, the point up yet. They need to put that point up. Yeah, I still haven't put the point up. Now it's, now it's on the board. Kane drives it. Oh, that's a double hit there. That was not even close. That was a, an officiating faux pas. Redding puts the ball in play. McGinnis Bell. Outside Doherty and blocked. So it's 2017. Redding hanging around. Made a good comeback after uh, trailing early. Oh, powerful serve played by McGinnis to Bell. Kayla. Kane and Melrose got turned around there. 2018. You know, Melrose getting a little tentative here, and Coach Shelley calls a timeout. Redding to put the ball in play, trailing 2018, set two. McGinnis. Oh, Sydney. Melrose has just been a little tentative here with the soft stuff. Bell, Johnson got a good piece of that one. Middle attack blocked by Rachel. Oh, and she just hits long. Good idea, she tried to hit over the, over the back row. Had a little too much mustard on that. It's 2019. Volleyball can be a game of momentum and Redding has regained that in set two. McGinnis, now Melrose is gonna play a three ball here. Need a block. Overpass. Trouble. Blocked by Rachel Johnson. A huge play there. Block kill for Rachel. Rachel's been very big here in the second set. You know, very solid player. Coach Shelley had her tag as a freshman as being an impact blocker for the team. And his prediction certainly came true. Jill McGinnis puts it in play. Outside attack, 
And it's blocked out. Point for uh, Redding. 21 20. Redding to serve. Melrose has brought their defense way up now. So they might be vulnerable deep corner. Over. Bell. Oh, wish they'd taken an extra pass there. Sydney. Oh, great. Oh, they're going to fall for four hits. That was a great uh, chicken wing dig there by McGinnis in the back row. McGinnis has ice water in her veins back there. McGinnis came into her own during the Central Catholic game last year where she and Amanda Camino were outstanding in the back. Doherty to Bell. Oh, that's two hits. Oh. You know, a, a block is not a hit, but if you try to just float it up in the air and then hit it again, it's a double hit. You know, Melrose already been victimized by one call in this, in this uh, set. Nolan to serve. Big moment for the sophomore. Gets it in play. Kept alive. Good job by Redding. They didn't ever gave up on the ball. Melrose, Melrose got a little bit uh, loss of concentration there on that point. You know, you can't, you can't quit on the ball till the point's over. McGowan's in the front row. Middle attack. Short ball played up by Brooke to Kane. Bell pushes deep. Yes! Brooke deep to the corner. That was a Marlboro special. She put that one right on the line. She couldn't have run over and dropped it any closer than that. 23-22. That's the biggest point of the match thus far. Amanda Camito in to serve. Middle is a three-year, actually a four-year player on this team. Oh, and goes into the net. Painful moment there for Lady Raider fans. And you see it at every level, whether it's professionals, Olympics, you know, it happens everywhere. 23 all. McGinnis, overpass, played up, Bell, McGowan, Redding, Redding had that one smoked out. And a point for Melrose, Redding's timing on the outside attack was misfired, and Melrose has set point here, McGowan to serve. It's not about running plays, it's about making plays, and this is one of those moments. McGowan to serve. Puts it up. Redding outside attack. Camito, Bell, Kane. There in the net, Point Melrose, second set victory, 25 23. Melrose leading two sets to nil. I'm Ron Sen here with Dick Collis on statistics. In the second set, Melrose had 14 kills, including five from uh, Jennifer Kane. Uh, a brace, no, take it, a tr uh, three for Sarah McGowan, four for Rachel Johnson. So a uh, well-diversified attack that stanza. They had one ace, a couple blocks, and two service errors. It's a little unfortunate that a match that could decide the Middlesex League title has to get played the first week of the season, but that's the way it is under uh, the current scheduling format. See a lot of parents of former Lady Raiders in attendance too. They know what this means to the program. And overall, pretty good uh, 
crowd here today. Joe McGinnis to serve. Redding and hits it into the net. Sarah McGowan, if you ask me what her biggest area of improvement over the past two years has been, it's as a blocker. She's always been a good hitter and she's improved a lot in her blocking skills. And that one goes out. I wondered if it got tipped, but that was not the call. Melrose quick 2-0 lead here after struggling through the latter half of the second set. McGinnis puts it over, Redding sets outside. Oh, and Kayla and Sierra put that one back in their face. Hello, Mr. Tachikawa. Nice wall put up there by the double block on the outside attack. McGinnis and Redding passes that one into no man's land. Redding, another point, and Redding's probably need to gonna take a timeout early. Down four nothing. Four nothing for service run for J Mac. Little sister here today. Played by Sarah. Kept alive. Oh, Kayla, that time she she gave us the Koufax fastball, not the Wilbur Wood stuff. Kayla's a you know tall, strong player, so she has that capacity. It's just a matter of doing it. McGinnis, middle attack, played up by Kane, Bell, outside, Doherty. Redding sets the outside. Good read. Kane was all over that, but it probably wouldn't have mattered because there's no way she was going to get to it anyway. So it was better that she did the refereeing than futile diving. McGinnis serving 6-0. Back row attack for O'Brien. Uh, Kayla puts it over. Outside attack. That soft, that soft stuff just doesn't work. She tried to set up Jen Kane for a back row attack. She wasn't really in timing to do that. Bell, Kayla, outside. Oh, blocked. Blocked by Redding. Now Sarah probably wishes she had that one back. I think if she could do it over again, it wouldn't have been the two mile an hour hit. Sydney, good pass to Brooke. Doherty from the middle. Outside attack, pretty good volleyball here into the net. So the action's picked up a lot here in set three. Allie Nolan checks in to serve. Yet another in Melrose's quintet of southpaws. Number 18, a famous number in uh, Celtics history. Wasn't that Dave Cowens? Short ball, you know, we don't see that many teams running the quick set, one ball, short ball, whatever you want to call it. Redding's done it well in the past. They surprised Melrose with it there. Very different timing on the attack and very hard to defend. McGinnis handles that one effortlessly. McGowan goes. I think it went wide. It was called wide, and I think it was wide. I think Coach Shelley thought it might have been blocked, but I, I think it was wide. Nolan, Bell, McGowan, and McGowan with another sideways swat. She's very, she's kind of unique in that very few players in Melrose history have done that very much. She's probably done it as much as anybody. Melrose leads set three, two sets nil, 8-3, Camito to serve. And good attack down the line for Redding. Oh. 
8-4, Redding serves. Nolan, Bell, across to Kane. Outside attack. J-Mac, outstanding in the back row right now. McGowan, she used the ups, got over the double block, tacked the overpass, scored the point, sold some tickets. Great play there by McGowan. That's why she's an All-State player. Redding sets the middle. A little deception there. Oh, and Rachel. Rachel with a little push top spin to the corner. Well placed, well thought out. Rachel's an excellent student as well as an outstanding volleyball player. 10-4. McGowan, overpass, Redding, Redding kept it alive. Outside attack, Kane, oh Kane really sort of. Rachel Melrose is really hitting the ball now. They're, they're being aggressive here. Melrose has really stepped up the attack here in the third set. And they're being rewarded for their efforts. Much better volleyball here in set three. I don't think it took him two sets to warm up in sweltering Veterans Memorial Middle School gym. Good pick off the net. Commito to Bell. Bell is going to go outside to Kane. Kane goes high, uses the tool, point for Melrose. Redding needs a timeout or something else. As basketball coach. Don Meyer would say you can always use two better players instead of two better plays. Oh, and that one goes wide. Melrose leads 12-5, set three. Ready to put the ball in play. Camito, nice pass to Bell, to Johnson. Oh, and Rachel with great swing at that one. That was an outstanding hit. And they read that one out. 13-5, Lady Raiders. Kayla Weiland checking in. You know, there's a very short rotation here, and that's what you're going to see against the top teams. And you know, you want to establish a rhythm, consistency. And Redding played that one a little bit. Uh, short. Melrose leads 14-5. Good, good effort there by Amanda. I would like to see people mopping up the wet spots every time players uh, dive on the floor. 14-6. Foot fault. You know, I think there's, there's basically no excuse for that to ever happen. But, but it, you know, we're going to see it in many games. 15-6. Kane is able on the line. Oh, into the net. Pain. And Annalisa DeBarry checks in for Sydney Doherty in that continuing battle at the outside hitter spot. Overpass, trouble. Oh, played up by Kayla. Good job. DeBarry pushes it over. Doesn't go over, Point Melrose. You, you team Kayla with either Rachel and Sarah at that outside uh, spot, and it's, it's a formidable block. McGowan back in, Johnson checks out.
Bell, Kayla, and DeBarry. DeBarry shows that she can bring the mustard. If you want to get a lot of playing time, that's what you're going to have to show the coaching staff that you're willing to attack the ball with vigor. Melrose leads 17-7, J-Mac to serve. She's been almost flawless at the libero. Middle attack, and they went with a dink and dunk for a point. Good, good attack there by Redding. Good strategy. You know, they certainly don't have the big hitter, so, you know, Melrose uh, could be vulnerable to that short stuff. I remember Drake had loved that years ago. And that is, it's called out. Jen Gentilly read that out easily. That was at least, that was at least half a centimeter over the line. Jen's back with us off maternity leave and full time at Melrose, we Melrose Weekly, the leading sports section in town. Middle attack, played up by DeBarry, Bell, McGowan. That was interesting. Usually players turn around to watch it. That was sort of like the left fielder at Fenway who doesn't even turn when it goes over everything. 19-8. And Redding is, uh, looks like they are calling it off here, sending in reserve players. Nolan to serve. Oh. That was like the Transformers. That one transformed from a long hit and suddenly fell in two feet inside the line. 20 to eight. Outside attack, oh, a lefty. We did not, we have not seen that left-handed swing. Reading fans get something to cheer about. Hasn't been a lot for Reading after that second set. Kane, Bell, wow. That was a good job by Brooke to somehow not run into the net. You know, anywhere she could get the ball, that was, you know, discretionary. 20 to 10. Nolan, Bell, Kane. Oh, good, good placement there. Outside attack. Kane gets it over. Nolan to Bell. Bell, McGowan. McGowan, big swing, home run. Dandy Don Meredith, turn out the lights, the party's over. Melrose leads 21-10. Camito back in. That one stays alive. Somehow Melrose gets, keeps it alive. Kept alive. Camito, outside Kane. Oh, booming drive by Kane. Melrose with maybe the best point of the season there. You know, Melrose used, you know, off the ceiling, through the backboard, through the rim, several passes to Kane for the slam dunk. Camito. Oh, Kane's in the net that time. She made an aggressive play to try to go for the block and, you know, it was another an inch too far. Yeah. 22-11. That's long. Melrose's back row has been doing a good job reading the, the balls out. And, you know, and with, as I've said before, they have so many players playing year-round volleyball now, the experience factor is 
far above what it used to be. McGowan. Kane tried to assault that. That's four, I thought. That's four hits. And it's 24-11. Thirteen set points for Melrose. McGowan to serve. McGowan drenched in perspiration after a great effort on a really hot day. Middle attack. Great pass. McGowan in the back. Outside. Kane flips it over. Gets the kill. Melrose wins. Three set nil. I won't say put the Middlesex League Championship in the bag, but a good chance that could happen. We love volleyball, a game we understand. We love volleyball, 12 all-stars in the sand. We love volleyball while other folks relax. We'll keep on playing volleyball until our heart attacks. We'll keep on playing volleyball. Video Jam Productions would like to thank the law offices of Eric Titano for their continued support of the broadcast of Melrose Red Raider and Lady Raider Athletics.